Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the vlog. Halloween is just around the corner, which begs the obvious question. If you are trick-or-treating, which monster's house should you avoid? But before we get there, we have to acknowledge the fact if you plug all the numbers and how much a costume costs and how much time you spend trick-or-treating, if you do the math, then the most efficient thing to do is just buy your favorite candy from Walmart and eat it from your basement like I do. But that's just a little bit of math. So let's get back to the question. First, let's start with vampires. I think they'd be the, one of the easiest because they're not going to go in your house the trick-or-treating to you because they have to be invited inside. And if you hit their house first, they can't be out in the sunlight because most trick-or-treating starts at like 6 o'clock. Werewolves are even easier except for that one time every 20 years that the full moon is on Halloween. They're just people until they're like, you know, werewolves. And the last time that a werewolf would werewolf out on Halloween was in 2001. And the next one's going to be in 2020. So for the next four years, you're safe. But until then, the vlog advises you to figure out which people in your neighborhood are werewolves. It is vital to your survival. Which is, you know what, just ditch the witch house. It's, it's not even worth it. They've got magical powers, and they look like normal people, so you don't know who they are. They're like invasion of the body snatchers. But don't go around accusing people of using witchcraft, because last time didn't work out great. Mummies, they're even more of a joke, because one, they're only in Egypt, so sorry Egyptian viewers if any of you, mummies are more your problem than anybody else, but we're here in Ohio, so we're safe. But even if you are in Egypt, the brain's gonna come out through the nose, at least that's how they're mummified. So you have nothing to be worried about on the brain's part. They're covered in embalming fluid, so they can barely move, and they're probably already decomposed. And if they're not, they have to get through their booby-trapped pyramid. <laughs> Whoa. And Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Sorry. Frankenstein, he's a dead doctor. But Frankenstein's monster, well, Frankenstein's monster was alive in the 19th century in Geneva. So you're all fine. Also using dead bodies to make another life form is like the least efficient way to do things. Like they died for a reason. Like if I reanimated a corpse and the arms were beaten and bruised, like you had to pick your corpses correctly. Like they're gonna have like broken bones. They're gonna have like heart failure. Like it's, it's not gonna go well. So just don't reanimate corpses. PSA from the vlog, please don't reanimate corpses. It makes everything harder on every party. And then another real threat, much like the witches, is zombies, because you know that they're gonna have the best candy on the block. They're gonna have those full-size crunch bars, and then you're gonna go up, and you're gonna, I want one of those large-size crunch bars. And then it's gonna be like, ah, it's a zombie, then it's gonna bite you. And then you're gonna be really sad for wanting that crunch bar. You may be afraid of these monsters, young grasshoppers. But alas, you will never run into them in a million billion years because one, you'll be dead by then. And two, you'll never run into them because it's so oddly specific of their circumstances that you'll be struck by lightning and bitten by a shark at the same time before they happen. I've been Spencer Walsh. Thanks for watching the vlog and have a happy Halloween. <laughs>